All right, the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, has taken steps to further the transition of over-the-air television to the next-gen ATSC 3.0 TV standard. They have announced that they will be voting on a course of action in order to move the next-gen changeover along, and in order to prepare for that, they have released a notice of proposed rulemaking, which is essentially a long announcement saying that they are considering changing some of the TV broadcast rules to further this transition along. The Notice of Proposed Rulemaking is a 69-page document released by the FCC, and it's really more of a discussion form at this point that addresses just about every facet of this next-gen TV transition. A few points that really stick out for me and I think are really important for antenna viewers. The first one is the signaling from the FCC that they want this transition to be voluntary, not forced, not mandatory, the way that big broadcasters have asked the FCC to approve. Their original idea, the broadcasters that is, was to abruptly cut off the ATSC-1 signal and flash cut to next-gen TV sometime in 2028 for most major TV markets in the U.S., and then finish it off by 2030, same thing. Abrupt cut off of ATSC-1 for the rest of the U.S. and flash cut to next-gen TV. And who cares who's actually ready for the transition? Well, the FCC says it's not going to be that way. They want to give TV stations the ability to pace this transition out for themselves. That gives them more flexibility to hopefully do this in a way that benefits their antenna viewers as much as possible. Since the FCC has indicated they want this to be a voluntary transition to next-gen TV, it's very unlikely that a hard date is going to be set to shut off ATSC-1 TV signals the way that broadcasters have demanded. And hopefully this means that TV stations wind down their use of ATSC-1 signals in a way that best reflects the interest of their TV viewers. A couple of other things in regards to the shutdown of ATSC-1. ATSC-1 is the TV standard that 99% of Americans are watching with their over-the-air antenna even today. One thing the FCC is suggesting is getting rid of the substantially similar rule. This is a rule that says if a TV station is broadcasting an ATSC-3 next-gen signal in a TV market, they must supply an ATSC-1 signal that is essentially the same as that next-gen TV signal. And this was done in order to not have a TV station leave ATSC-1 viewers out. So the FCC is suggesting to get rid of that rule now, again, probably in the interests of flexibility for stations, but that does not necessarily mean a TV station is going to cut off their ATSC-1 signal abruptly. It's highly unlikely because they know that they'd be turning off lots of antenna viewers. There's also ad revenue that they would be throwing away and no TV station is going to do that. So I just think that's there to allow stations a little more flexibility in making the transition from ATSC-1 to next-gen TV. Now, another important thing in regards to ATSC-1 signals is this. There's really not enough spectrum to have next-gen signals broadcasting alongside ATSC-1 signals that are pretty much the same. There's not enough spectrum bandwidth in a market to do that. So what is being suggested is the use of a reverse lighthouse. This is also known as a nightlight station. So if you think about all the next-gen TV stations broadcasting in a given TV market, all those next-gen stations are on one host lighthouse station. Okay, the opposite would be done for ATSC one signals. They would have what's called a nightlight station, one TV station that broadcasts all of the ATSC one main signals. So that would be your NBC, CBS, Fox, etc. And most likely, though, the problem would be that those 
would probably end up being standard definition signals only. The reason that those nightlight signals might only be a standard definition is because ATSC-1 signals use MPEG-2 video codec, which does not use spectrum very efficiently. So one suggestion the FCC is entertaining is using MPEG-4 video codec, which would allow broadcasters to compress those ATSC-1 signals and still maintain an HD picture. It would allow them to use the spectrum bandwidth on those nightlight stations more efficiently. Who knows, they may even be able to pack on a few sub-channels too, but that remains to be seen. So those are the big takeaways for over-the-air antenna viewers from this notice from the FCC. This is going to be a voluntary transition. TV stations will be able to move at their own pace, hopefully with the needs of their antenna viewers in mind, not a forced changeover the way that the big broadcasters want. And ATSC-1, those signals are not going away anytime soon. There is most likely going to be some kind of nightlight station to keep those signals on the air a little longer to give viewers more time to transition over to next-gen TV in their homes. This notice from the FCC touches on just about every topic related to the next-gen TV switchover. A few of the big topics that are mentioned and that the FCC is asking questions about and looking for further information on include the DRM encryption issue. That's a really big one. Another one is the mandating of ATSC-3 tuners in televisions. There's been a lot of pushback about that from consumer electronics manufacturers. Another one is the use of over-the-air TV spectrum for other uses such as data casting. The question is asked, should there be a minimum amount of TV spectrum that is set aside only to be used for over-the-air broadcasts? Good question, actually. Another interesting one is they even ask about, are there ways that costs can be lowered for consumers? For example, they mention the 2009 digital television transition coupons that were distributed for digital converter boxes. Are they exploring possibly using some public funds to allow for some kind of a subsidy program to help viewers get on board with next gen tv or can that funding come from some other source so this document has made it clear that the fcc is really open to all kinds of suggestions and they're looking for feedback at some point there will be a public comment period make sure your voice gets heard get your comments on record and remember that nothing has been decided to this point. The FCC is looking for information and this notice of proposed rulemaking is one step in a long process before they ultimately decide how the next-gen TV transition is actually going to go down. After reading this notice, I do think it's clear the FCC does hear the concerns of the general public. They even acknowledge the widespread consumer frustrations expressed in these filings, referring to the thousands of viewer comments that they've received on hot button issues like DRM encryption, for example. This document marks a big change in the approach the FCC is taking to the next gen TV transition. It's much more moderate and balanced as opposed to the full steam ahead strategy that they were proposing earlier on. Take a look at this notice of proposed rulemaking for yourself. There's a link to it in the description and please let me know what you think. I look forward to reading your comments on this situation.